Good morning, everybody. Uh, and uh, thanks for attending this session. And a little thanks for a very kind introduction. I'm going to talk about opportunities in IoT from an Indian entrepreneur's perspective. And before that, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cisco, IoT, how we look at the space, and then get into the activities in India and the kind of uh, action that we are seeing here. So just about myself, right now I run Cisco's investments and M&A arm for uh, Asia Pacific. So I wear a venture investor hat. But in my past lives, I've been on the business side. I've been an entrepreneur as well. So I'll try and try and share of how I'll try and share how I see this whole space evolving. Cisco likes to call this as IOE, Internet of Everything. Now it's not, not just a catchphrase, but there is a reason behind this. You know, one could safely say that IoT or connecting machines has been something that has been around for many years. You know, it, it took decades to build an overnight sensation. So it's not, not anything new. What is new now is the connectivity. So you have the sensors, you have the network, you have the cloud, and eventually all this connects back to the process and back to the people. I think that's where this whole aspect and this whole ecosystem coming together, that's what makes it extremely interesting. So how big is the opportunity? 50 billion devices, 19 trillion dollars of value, 15 trillion, 20 trillion, and so on and so forth. There's a reason why I have these numbers in red. Uh, I was uh, uh, in a session uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, you know, I, I've, I've had two extremes in my career. I've been a strategy consultant and I've been an entrepreneur as well. Probably in that session, I was wearing my strategy consultant hat. And I started talking about you know, billions of devices, trillions of value, and I had one gentleman in the audience who was a budding entrepreneur who, I would be candid to say, was a little irritated. He stood up and asked, you large company guys, you always talk trillions and billions. Tell me what is the exact value. You know, tell me, is it, is it real? Or is it, is it just some large number which, is, which you cannot really lay your hands on? And, and I, I'm going to try and be specific today. So instead of staying at that trillions of dollars and billions of devices, I'll talk about uh, the actual value. And one of the things I want to reiterate here today that if you look at IoT, the stack itself, everything is being rebuilt. Think of the mobile industry, the mobile phone industry, the smartphone industry. Think of at the hardware level what Intel had to go through, ARM, ARM coming in, Broadcom, and so on and so forth. The whole industry got disrupted. Same thing we expect as Cisco to happen in IoT as well. So it's the hardware. Uh, it's the software, it's the services. A whole new set of things will be created in this industry. There are some things that have happened in the past, but a whole new set of value will also come in. There will be many vertical solutions. So I, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but the value also will come in each vertical. It is not just going to be horizontal platform. It's the ultimate value that you bring to that industry. Another key point to note in IoT, if you're an entrepreneur, you have a startup, you're selling to the BUs. You're selling to the business units and you're selling value. You're either selling ability to increase revenue or reduce costs. It's not just an IT sale. That's another key point that, that we all have to keep in mind as you look at this industry. I, I'll give a couple of examples of, of Cisco and IoT and uh, you know, some of the activities that we've been doing globally. Uh, smart city is one of our big focus areas. Uh, it's something that has happened in a large scale in various places in Asia, in Europe, in the US as well. Some are greenfield, some are brownfield. India is again also talking about smart cities. So we, we have several, uh, several projects now where Cisco has implemented several, in, in partnership with the municipalities and the local government, a series of services and infrastructure which is delivering smart services. One example is Barcelona, where there was a redevelopment and a lot of new companies were invited after that area was redeveloped. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's created a lot of new startups. In that city, we offer a lot of services. Uh, you know, you might have, you know, I won't go through all of these, but you would have heard some of these. Uh, smart lighting, smart water, waste management, and so on and so forth. So that's from a city perspective. I want to play a short video. So moving from a city, a large kind of setup, to what you could do in a particular industry. I just mentioned that industry 
is where the value will be. So you'll have to create vertical application. We, uh, as Cisco, implemented uh, this at a customer. Let me try and. So uh, this is a this is a customer, a mining uh, company, uh, Canada-based, where we actually brought the whole concept of IoT, Internet of Everything, to life, and something that delivered value to that company. Their productivity actually went up four times. So I think they were doing about half a billion dollar, uh, going up to two billion dollar of, of value. I'll just play this for a couple of minutes. They'll give you a sense of what, what's happening in IoT. Uh, it was a very, I would have to say, a very nerve-wracking experience. You're literally driving under the earth. The smell is the smell of sulfur, uh, the smell of dirt. And when you go down there, and they're blasting, and they're digging, and they're, it's a very difficult job. It's very dangerous, it's hard work, it's hard labor, and the mountain doesn't give everything you want it to give. Sometimes it's stubborn. We've gone through a revolution of technology, which is the vehicles and the haulers and the crushers. How do we optimize what we have? And how do we bring it where we need it? Versus, I think we need to go there, and I think we need to haul that, and I think we need to drill there. If you take the internet of everything, what we've done is saying, hey, that's a great idea. Let's see how we apply it to the mining sector. What we've changed is, we've coined the phrase, take the lid off the mine. And what that means is, the, the mine is completely Wi-Fi enabled. We've enabled our vehicles, we've enabled our personnel, we've enabled the operation in an, in an underground environment to be seen, viewed, touched over internet access, which is Wi-Fi. Now what we're doing is we're transforming what we classify as a device, or what is a device, or how is the device being used. You know, in our case, we're no longer distinguishing between a, a vehicle and, and a computer. Well, the vehicle is a computer, and, and we need that data. But we don't physically have to be underground to see that. My guys are above ground in their office, and they're getting this data in their office, the same way I'm getting the data here in Toronto. We have video conferencing, we have Jabber. You know, that's now all coming together and, and doing it in real time. So that's the concept of taking the lid off the mine. People said, no, Mark, that's not going to work. Well, look at our production increases. I mean, to me, that, that's, that's the proof of the pudding right there, right? 500,000 tons to 2 million tons, which virtually quadrupled our production. Look at our cost savings, 2.5 million across the board in long distance costs and communication costs and productivity gains. Safety is one of our core values. We have that. See, that's the challenge in the industry is that show me it's working. You may have a concept, but show me that it works. And that's now changing and saying, hey, look, DPM, Dundee Precious Metals, it worked for them. We've actually have taken so I'll just uh, stop it there. The, the main point that I was making was that it's about the industry. It's about the vertical. It's about the value that you deliver. It's about the revenue and cost. So in that sense, it's very specific when you're talking about Internet of Things. It's not just about cool devices, but it's about actual business value. I, I want to switch gears here, and like I promised in the beginning, I'm going to get a little specific. So if you're an entrepreneur in India and you're looking at building companies out of India, what are the areas that you can play in? Now, we at Cisco have sort of divided or, or looked at the whole stack. I talked about the whole stack changing. So what is that stack? There are seven layers. So think of this as the new OSI. And you start all the way from the physical devices and the sensors. And as you go up, you talk about connectivity, infrastructure. You get to the platform layer. Eventually, you get to the applications. And in each layer, values will be created. New companies will come in. New, new applications will come in. New devices will come in. Ultimately, you're all bringing it together to the business process. And you can also think of consumer in the same way. So Internet of Things is not just about B2B. It's about consumer as well. And you can pretty much apply the same kind of framework. So if you've got a connected lifestyle, what is, what, what, what is the platform? What is the application? What is the value you're getting out as an individual? I'll be using this framework as I, as I go, go along. And again, apply the same thing. So, a lot of you would know some of these things, but, but what I like, and again, I'm going back a little bit to my strategy background, is, is how do you start evaluating those opportunities? And, and our hypothesis and my experience of what I'm seeing across the globe activities in IoT, there are basically three layers. 
So at the bottom, there's infrastructure. So you, you get to sensors, you get to data collection, you convert all the sensor data to IP, you do some basic analytics, you bring in security. Now that layer from an Indian perspective is just the sensor layer. Yes, there is opportunity, but there are many players as well. So think of the Chinas, the Taiwans, uh, think of the companies elsewhere in the world. A lot of activity happening here. There are some small gaps, so security for example, and in, in the IoT world, security is gonna be quite important. If you've connected all your devices to the internet and, and there is something that goes wrong and some Trojan comes in and everything stops working, that's a nightmare. So security is an area where we, uh, as Cisco Ventures, uh, see that a lot more could be done. So if you're thinking of uh, startups or opportunities here, within the infrastructure layer, think about security. Uh, Finally, quickly, I will, uh, so like this security platform and applications, I think the, the platform layer, again, is a crowded space. Uh, the idea is that you created an IOE pass, platform as a service. Several players, again, doesn't mean that there is no space there. Applications is where I think a lot of value can be brought in from startups from India. So you're thinking industry, you're thinking of the value and the processes and the needs of that industry and creating applications that ride on this whole infrastructure. I'll, 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 I'll go very quickly. I, I've been warned I have just two, three minutes left. Um, again, uh, bringing this to specifically in India, what are the kind of uh, areas that you could work in? Uh, I've talked about this. So in India, you can think of vertical apps, services. While services is an old thing, you know, IT services game has played out. It's a scale game. There are large players, you know. So new entrance is difficult. But we believe, or at least my hypothesis is, that services in IoT, whether it's managed services, whether it's consulting, that'll be a new space. There is nobody who can go and bring this all together for a customer and even run it. So that's an opportunity. Yeah, you may not get a WhatsApp kind of valuation. You know, services is not that game, but you'll get good cash flow. And don't forget, as an entrepreneur, cash is ultimately king. Uh, sensor plus app. So I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Sensor is something that you can get devices, you can build, you can source it from Taiwan, but you add an app to it. And if you think of the Indian context, now with that app, you're delivering value. So if you see a lot of the startups out here, you could imagine that that's, that's what they're trying to do. They've got a sensor, they've got some basic device, a very cheap device, but they've added value by adding an app to it. And now you could go to an industry or you could go to, go to a customer and deliver value. Um, on the, from the global front, if you're looking at targeting the global market, I would stress on security. I talked a little bit about it. Security globally is a space where IoT can do with a lot of startups. Uh, very quickly, uh, there is action in, in India. I'll talk about a couple of companies. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, you know, some, of the, uh, some of the areas which I talked about, so you have verticals like manufacturing, transportation, uh, managed services, platform. So Coaxis is one company that, that's uh, one of Cisco's investing companies. They're in the manufacturing space. And I want to talk about it for 30 seconds. Coaxis has got a platform that collects real-time data from all machines on the production floor any make, any type, analog, digital. What we've done is that in turn, we've taken that platform and integrated to our routing platform as well. So you've now got a full value that can be delivered to the manufacturing floor. Ineda is another interesting company. Uh, it's in the, in the technology space, so they have a new type of semiconductor for IoT devices, which is extremely power efficient. Its power consumption is a tenth of the existing semiconductors. And again, there are, there are a bunch of uh, other players. Uh, there's a platform company out of Sri Lanka called WSO2, which is an open source middleware platform. But the beauty of the platform is it's so light, it could literally run a very basic sensor kind of devices. Again, uh, these are some of the Cisco invest investing companies. Some of the other names are not our portfolio companies, but interesting players as well. I would like to conclude uh, by saying that from a Cisco lens, uh, we are looking at, uh, you know, the whole IoT ecosystem in three pillars. We are working very closely with large companies as partners, but we are also creating IoE innovation centers across the globe. There are six already in the globe. There are many more that's going to come next year. On the investment front, we actually have $150 million committed to various new technologies across the globe. We have a pool of money for India. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's public information. It's $40 million for early stage kind of companies out of India. And then we are also creating a developer community. I think the, idea, the, the, the main thing about IoT is that 
it's not one company can do it alone. It's not a Cisco or a Honeywell or a Schneider. I go back to the first thing that I said. It's a new stack being built. And all of us will have to work together with each other. Startups, new companies, large companies, and so on and so forth. I'll bring back my red letter, 19 trillion. And as I said, I'm going to be more specific this time around. But in the end of the day, whether it's a trillion dollar value, 19 trillion or not, the main point is there is a lot of value that could be created in the IoT space in partnering across small companies, large companies, and creating both value both on the B2B side and the consumer side. I'll, I'll conclude with that, and uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Alok. There is time for a couple of questions. If there are uh, questions from the audience, there is one over there. If you could just ask the question, I'll repeat it. Uh, US, UK and uh, Canada area. So what you interestingly said about there's an uh, aspect to services. Now do you mean that service also includes support activity? Because when you are talking about 50 billion devices, I see there's a whole lot of opportunity for companies who are really providing tech support in those. Because you can't go and then physically serve or support a device if a sprinkler goes off, if a thermostat goes off. I mean what you can do remotely, what you can do to do better service on that device. So do you see that sort of opportunity coming in near term? Absolutely. So uh, in services, expect a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, it could be all the way starting from helping customers decide what their IoT strategy is, where should they go, and what value they should extract. It could go all the way to support as well. Uh, to my mind, Cloud, which is a more mature market today, but five years ago, cloud was sort of just coming up. And a lot of services companies came up during that time. Not many in India, but I've seen several in, in, in Asia Pacific. Um, and, and they brought a lot of value to customers. Now services, there's one more thing I'll add here to services, the managed services model. Meaning, uh, today, either it'll be the telco. So in the US, you have Verizon of the world actually creating IoT managed services place for various verticals. Telcos in India may do it, uh, may not, but that could also be an opportunity. Meaning, if, if you look at the India business, it's all about an OPEX model. So can you go to a customer and say, I have all the stuff that you need, the sensor plus app, and I'm gonna run it for you, and this is the value I'll deliver. That, that is something that is well accepted in India. So yeah, several things you could do in services. Yeah, thank you. We'll just take one more question, if there is another question from the audience. Yeah, please. Uh, there is a smart care platform from Cisco which does about uh, managed services and a whole lot of stuff. So for a startup, uh, how do you see that smart city space of 100 smart city which are coming up as far as Cisco product and technology and services are concerned? So in fact, I was talking to Anil earlier today. Uh, you know, for a startup from a Cisco smart city perspective, it could be the vertical applications that I was talking about. So go up a layer. Uh, each smart city, each country would have different needs. Uh, certain developed geographies will have a different set of applications needed. India would have different set of applications. So there are partnership programs within Cisco, our IOE business and smart city business. They run partnerships, large companies, small companies. So that's one way to partner with Cisco. Uh, other side of smart cities is if you go specifically into the technology stack, if I take security as an example. So if you've got certain technologies where you believe that you're, you're, you're sort of delivering security all the way from the sensor. You know, so the sensor data gets encrypted, for example, all the way up to the cloud uh, or some parts thereof. So it could be uh, different areas, but I think my, uh, my immediate comment would be more on the vertical application side. The IOE pass layer that I talked about, sort of middleware for IOE, that's still a holy grail. No company yet, I think, has, has achieved full success there. That could be another area for partnering with, with companies like Cisco. Alok, thank you very much, um, and thanks to the audience for the questions. Alok will be around here. If you have uh, any further questions, you can take those offline. 